Welcome, I'm Hummy from Hummy's World, and here is a lesson I actually did way back in 2007, and um, I did it in a written format, so I'm going to uh, record it to a video. Um, I actually had put it on my blog and then copied it into a lesson in the forum. This is a photography lesson on rule of thirds, but it also applies to um, digital scrapbooking in so many ways. I, ever since I used the, learned this, I use it all the time. Um, it can be utilized in layouts in the placement of photos on a page where you put your photos on the rule of thirds, um, in the placement of elements on a page, uh, where you can put your elements on the rule of thirds. Maybe you want them in a triangle, which is another form of the rule of thirds, on the rule of third lines. That's a double rule of thirds in a layout, if you followed that. <laughs> um, placement of color on a page. You could put uh, the color in three spots, but have the color on the rule of thirds lines to carry the eye around the page. Um, in photography, the rule of thirds uses a nine block grid and my camera has a grid that you can turn on. Get your uh, manuals out or Google it with your camera type and um, you'll find that you can often turn them on that way as you're taking a photo you can compose your photo into the frame so it is on the grid lines in the uh, frame within the frame you're going to see that here I'm going to show you some examples and Photoshop elements has a non black a nine block grid that you can use and I'm going to show you that here in a little bit more and down here I want to mention it says uh, pay attention also to the placement of eyes for artistic effect um, I don't have examples of eyes here but for instance place the eye at one of the intersections or off to one side or the other of the grid when taking photos of people, the eyes are generally the focal point. So if you're going to be doing for this lesson um, people, it's the eyes that need to be on the focal point. Um, another fun technique with this is that uh, often it creates a blank open space to one side of the photo such as this one here are the berries where the berry is centered and the berry is on the rule of third lines I've got all this extra space and that can be really utilized in digital scrapbooking layouts um, you can uh, put your journaling on that blank space um, titles or other elements um, there are so many different ways that you can use that space um, so, for instance, if a child is on the rule of third line over here and you have a bunch of blank space here, you'd be able to uh, put your journaling there, your title there, uh, you know, many other artistic ways that you could utilize that. Uh, you can even put a frame around the child and leave the rest of the photo there. Um, it says another method is to use the heavy weighted side of the photo on the edge of the layout and counterweight it with elements on the other side. Um, but sometimes rules are meant to be broken. For instance, close ups often are not applicable to the rule. So if you're doing macro, um, sometimes you can get the rule of thirds, sometimes you just have to center. So when we get done with this, I'm going to show you some more here actually in Photoshop Elements. Your challenge is going to be to go out and take sample photos of the same object, first centering it and then second using the rule of thirds and then um, kind of put them together like I have here showing um, 
the uh, differences between centered and rule of thirds. But here is Photoshop Elements, and here is a nine-point grid. And for the most part, your goal is going to be to put the focal point of your photo, what you want your eye to go to first. That is the focal point. Put the focal point of your photo on one of the intersections. And so I've circled the four intersections. And so, yeah, you're going to want to try to put your focal point here. So you have a lot of variety to work with. Now, you can also, for some elements, uh, for some photos, um, put them right in the one of the rule of third lines. For instance, um, horizons, you may have a uh, lake, and um, then above that, the sky. You may want to put your lake right here in this rule of thirds with the horizon of it right on this line and then have the sky from here up or you might want to have the lake all the way up to this one and the sky from there on up uh, so um, use this grid I, it really makes a difference in your photos just don't go out and do what the basics like I used to do <laughs> way back before 2007 and center everything so I have some photos here which we're going to look at from 2007 that I took um, you can see here this is more like a macro it's centered there's really nothing I can do about that um, to make it more artistic but here is the same leaf and you can see how I've placed it on the rule of thirds rather than just centering it and if you are in Photoshop elements you can go to your custom shape tool this is Photoshop elements 11 but it's in every version let's go ahead and dock this so that goes out of the way and in your custom shapes uh, you can um, choose all elements and then I I found it near the bottom right here near the bottom I had to look through the whole thing it was near the bottom or um, I did uh, tiles and it's in one of the tiles but it's there in every version of Photoshop elements and so get that rule uh, nine block grid and just simply quickly draw over it and you can see my leaf is right here on this line and more so close to the intersection of this line and so that makes for a more artistic photo um, than if it was just centered um, with it right out here in the center uh, I also I want to mention Let's get rid of this. Uh, the crop tool, and I think it started in Photoshop Elements 9 or 10, I can't remember. Um, and it's not in Photoshop, last I checked. <laughs> the full version of Photoshop. Uh, but the crop tool has, once you let go, these rule of third lines. So when you're cropping, um, let's say I wanted this to be more in the center of this uh, intersection here because it's actually down just a little bit so I can move my crop tool around until I get this right on the intersection and click OK and now you can see it's even actually more artistic you go back to your grid and you can see it's right on the center and so um, that is a handy tool in Photoshop elements on the crop tool um, here are two trees Let's separate them since they're vertical so here I centered the tree that's what people normally try to do and if I draw my grid on it 
you see it goes right down the center line. Now that's not all that bad, um, you know, because it does follow one of the rule of thirds. But the actual better choice and more artistic choice is this one over here. It, it in uh, it I say that it's better, but um, you know it's all in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> Some people may think the other's better, but um, I find that it's much better uh, to have it on this rule of thirds line. You can see it's right here on this line, and the horizon of it or the bottom of it actually is right on this line, and so the that puts the focus really on that tree a whole lot better. And it actually gives you a better perspective of the trail. Your eye goes to the tree first and then it follows the trail. Here the trail kind of gets lost. So let's close those out and see what else we have. I have a bridge and we pull them in and you see this bridge is centered here um, you know it there's just nothing artistic about it let's see if I can kind of pull it off to the side and then this one is centered more the entryway is centered more on this line right here and so that actually makes for a better photo. Where is this one over here? Um, you get more of the bridge, uh, but it's just not quite as artistic as this one in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> I should always say that in the eye of the beholder. OK, trees. Here is a tree that's nice and centered. And it's just not quite as artistic as this one over here, which is in, this is that example where I said you can put it actually in the row. I mean, I could have put it right on this line, but this allowed also for a lot of uh, dead space, um, also kind of known as white space where your eye rests and it just goes to the tree. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's cool. And this one, I didn't get a good picture of the flower that's on the rule of thirds line, but this one is, as you can see, just centered and it's a pretty good photo because it's sharp but it's not artistic because it's just centered this one's a good example of the rule of thirds but I didn't I didn't get a focus very well but this now the flower is on this rule of thirds line and don't be afraid I see all my examples are on the left rule of third line I don't know I think that's natural don't be afraid to put them on the right rule of third line and allow stuff to be over here I think with flowers what I tend to do is you see this flower is coming in from the left the way it's kind of leaning if the flower were leaning this way I would have put the rule of thirds over here it kind of just you just learn this stuff um, after you practice. This one I don't have a bad version of it but it's of my dog and um, you can see if I draw the rule of thirds line my dog's eye is actually on the line and um, her face is on the line so that would be much more artistic than trying to put her in the center and then you have all this uh, blank stuff off here that is not vital to the photo. Um, this just works uh, so much better this way. I'm trying to see the back of the swing is also up here in this rule of thirds area so that you've got almost a double rule of thirds working for you here. Um, this is a berry. 
you can look at it right there and kind of see which one looks more artistic. This is a really good example. And so we're centered. Whoops. I was, oops, what did I do? This one's centered, and I was trying to draw a line, but I hit the wrong thing. Um, so there it is, right? Dead center. And it's not quite as artistic as this one where the berry is on the rule of thirds line and almost on this intersection. If you make a big circle, it is. That can be cropped a little bit to um, make it, let's see, go to our crop tool. And let's crop it down. Now it's exactly on that intersection. So when I go back and draw this, you can see that's even a better photo. So here's a great example of how this does not, for the majority of the people, <laughs> caveats. <laughs> this one is not quite as artistic and eye appealing. I keep saying artistic, but it eye appealing is a good word as this one over here. Your eye um, has lots of area to rest. Um, and this, it, it's just, you can just see for yourself. You just have to get out there and um, practice this and pretty soon it's going to be second nature and what is interesting to me is that I tend to now look at the world this way I'm um, when I'm looking at something picturesque or just I see these little moments in my eyes even without my camera where my eye just frames it up in this more artistic thing than this less eye appealing. <laughs> I'll get my words right. Um, and I will go, oh, I wish I had my camera or I'll just see it in so much more beauty, so much more um, appreciation for the world around me when I start looking at it and framing it in my mind. So you do this enough and it's going to come second nature to you. Uh, so just constantly do this and it's going to make you a better photographer and um, it's going to change the way you appreciate the world. So get out there and uh, take two photos, one of them centered, one of them on the rule of thirds, and share both of them with us. And I can't wait to see what you do.